Pardon me, we're being joined by Professor Iran Yashiv, who's a professor of economics at the Tel Aviv University. Professor, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and joining us here in Vion. Now, the Bank of Israel has in fact pegged the number as $58 billion is the cost of Israel's war so far. Now, do you agree with this estimate? Do you think this is a conservative estimate? And how badly has this affected Israel's economy? Well, the estimate is uh, a, a shot in the dark. That is, it's very difficult to know uh, what the cost of war uh, now and even more difficult to know what it will be throughout 2024. And the reason is that the data are not in yet on things like GDP in the relevant period, on consumption of people, on investment, etc. So it's a very rough estimate, and I would actually assume it's on the conservative side especially given the fact that the Bank of Israel is probably the most optimistic forecaster of GDP growth next year. That is this right. new year, right. 2024. And also, you know, Israel has revised its interest rates at least about three times since the war began. Do you expect that this could become a trend as the war drags on? And how much of an issue is inflation because of this war within Israel? Actually, in terms of inflation, the news has been recently good. The Bank of Israel is expecting uh, something like 2.4% this year, and uh, the capital market is expecting a little more. But uh, it seems like reasonable to think that it will be somewhere around 2.4%. 0.4, 2.5%, which is within the inflation target of the Bank of Israel. Mm -hmm. And in fact, war developments uh, tend to create, or at least up till now, tended to create deflationary forces right. for a number of reasons. First of all, in real activity, there is a slowdown because, uh, because people are mobilizing the war, because consumption goes down, because tourism goes down, and there has been a significant appreciation of the currency of the shekel, right. which is a deflationary force. So Israel's problem right now is not inflation. Mm -hmm. Inflation is coming down. Right. And from this point of view, one can reduce interest rates. And also, how much of a concern do you think is the national debt for Israel? You know, the most recent figures peg that number to be almost about $300 billion. And this was, you know, with respect to December 2022. And with the war having dragged on for well over three months, do you think national debt for Israel is, is a serious concern that the Israeli foreign finance minister will have to look on? Actually, it doesn't look like at this point, although it may become a concern later on. I'll explain why. First of all, it's useful to speak as capital markets do in terms of percentage of GDP and Israel's debt uh, ratio, debt to GDP ratio at the end of 2022 was 660.5%, mm -hmm. which is very good by Western standards, at least ever since the global financial crisis of 15 years ago. Right. Uh, in fact, it's almost uh, in line with the Maastricht criteria that everybody uh, wishes to attain in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. It's gone up to 62%, which is not a big rise. And the Bank of Israel is now forecasting a rise to 66%. Right. This is still manageable and not an issue for concern. When may it become an issue? If the government... Uh, on the fiscal side, doesn't do the proper uh, action. And uh, if the government budget deficit balloons, and then we may be under a different dynamic and a different story. Right. Uh, but so far, it hasn't been long, three months. Uh, nothing extremely serious has happened, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a risk of a fiscal uh, runaway, especially with this current government and finance minister, 
Right. So one should watch out. And I think the governor, Amir Yaron, was alluding to that. Absolutely indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Yashi, for taking time out and speaking to us here on Vyond. Sure. Thank you. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.